I'm saying? Because when she was a little girl, when I used to go visit them prisons like Attica and Dannemora, I would spend quality time with my family. So I would take them with me. Throw them in the car. So we go to Comstock, we go to Dannemora, we go to Attica, I drop them off at the hotel, and I go inside the prison, teach the brothers, give the dial up. You know what I'm saying? When I leave the prison, I'm back up and hanging. Who was the first Muslim who started doing the prison work to acknowledge? And I thought in New York State, uh, uh, I mentioned, you know, the Nation of Islam, and then I mentioned the Dal Islam Muslim Prison Committee. In the late eight, in the late sixties, see, and I became a part of that that, that prison committee like in the seventies, all right, in the seven, 71. and then we were going in as volunteers and just doing the work. And um, yeah, that's when there was no beers, no kufis, no masjids, no imams, no no none of that. All right, matter of fact, it was right after the Attica riots. I think the Attica riots was like in seventy one, and then. Uh, the brothers behind the wall began to cry for uh, representation, you know, and that's when the New York State hired two chaplains from the Nation of Islam, okay? Uh, and Sunni Muslims at that time, which we represent in Dog's Land, our Imam said, no, we can't work for the state. But we'll do a contract. We have a committee, they deal directly with the mosque and the imam and you know, the people, the deputies who want to send it. Any monies and crew come back to the mosque. Like personal thing. Brilliant idea, man. This way, you know, we ain't working for you, we're working for the mosque. Feasibility. The imam always wanted to retain the integrity, man, about our dollar. You see what I'm saying? But of course, we had a right to get paid, expenses and stuff like that there. See, so that's where he, that's the route he went. So I was telling this to my, my daughter, and then. But she remembered I became a chaplain. <laughs> so eventually that did happen. We had to, we had to, you know, we outgrew the, the volunteer thing. The brothers inside the prison needed more representation. And so she wanted to know who was the first Sunni Muslim chaplain in New York State. I looked at myself. <laughs> 1976. But most, most, most people don't know that, but I'm talking about that. I was the first Sunni Muslim chaplain that was hired by the state of New York, man. Now they got over 50. You know what I'm saying? With a starting salary, maybe $60,000, $70,000 a year. That's a big game, man. One of them. I mean, it was a good paying job. Mm -hmm. You see, but 1976, I was the first Sunni Muslim chapter. Because again, the Nation of Islam at that time represented, you know, you know the Nation of Islam, and even as they grew and evolved into the world community of Islam in the West, you know, American Muslim mission. And then eventually, uh, just uh, uh, Imam Rahmadi Muhammad's community was called that, you see. And, Several names, and you know, they, they went through a period and evolved. And so the state always recognized that, that Sunni orientation. You know what I'm and so, so when they hired, they, they hired us, inshallah. So I, I was a person, and, and then shake a smile at the end. And then the rest was the history. <laughs> alhamdulillah, okay, so that, so, alhamdulillah. Uh, and so, like I said, tonight was. So not just to talk about the prison work, but just some of the work that you brothers have, have no idea, all right? Because, you know, I haven't had time to write. Of course, many people have been coming to me over the last several years. They say, Mom, you need to write, you need to write. And just recently, I come from a conference, and one of the, uh, uh, Sheikh, 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 Sheikh Yasser Kadi, you know, one of the brothers who uh, part of the Maghrib Institute, the Dawa. Uh, 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 knowledge uh, uh, based uh, institution and whatnot. And as soon as he brother introduced me to him, when we heard my name, the first thing he said, he said, Well, Imam, when are you going to write your memoirs? <laughs> so it was like another sign. So when I got back home, then Abdul Karim said the same thing, Imam, we need to cap some. So I said, Well, let's go ahead, let's do some things, inshallah. Let's, let's start. So this will be like a first kind of installment, you know, uh, other to come, inshallah, okay, so people get to know who I am and what we're doing, inshallah, okay, right? Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My name is Mustafa Habibullah, 
And tonight, uh, we're in Masjid Ikamat al uh with Imam Alameen Abdul Latif. And uh, <clears throat> I'm one of the brothers here who, uh, you know, from the Masjid here, and, uh, who's a student of the Imam and the Sahaba. And uh, today we're going to discuss uh, some of the things, uh, you know, the Imam's been involved with throughout his whole Islamic life, inshallah. This program tonight is uh, a recap. It's, it's going to recap some personal history in the Dawah work of our beloved Imam Alameen Abdul Latif, focusing primarily when, how, and what circumstances brought him into Al Islam. And of course, his experience as a young Muslim over years and the Dawah work he has been involved in within America. We will also touch upon some current issues as well, and perhaps the Imam's views on our future and our Ummah, and the Ummah, and the love. <clears throat> Imam Alameen Abdul Latif reverted to Islam in 1969. In 1970, he joined the Dal Islam movement at Yasin Mosque in Brooklyn, New York. He was trained and educated in the Dal Islam School of Technology, excuse yeah. theology, in the subjects of Usuluddin, comparative religion, Quranic Arabic, and Tajweed under Sheikh Yahya Karim, and received a certificate of completion in 1976. Imam, Imam Alameen attended and helped organize several Imams training programs in Plainfield, Indiana, US, Indiana, USA in 1987, and in Mecca, Saudi Arabia in 1999 and 2000, earning certificates of completion in Arabic, Usul Fiqh, Aqidah, Sira, and Hadith under Sheikh Khalid al Harwani. He has been an active worker, organizer, preacher, and teacher of Islam for over 35 years and has traveled extensively throughout America and abroad in Europe, Canada, the Middle East, Africa, and the Caribbean, lecturing on Islam, unity, and community development. Imam Alameen is one of the founders of the Masjid Al-Ashura, Majlis Ashura, Leadership Council of New York, and has served as the president since 1990. He is also the current Imam of Masjid Allahu Akbar in Wine Dance, New York. So my question, first question is, uh, what brought you into the fold of Islam? Bismillah ar It was, uh, 1969, exact, May of 1969, I mean, this past May, I've been Muslim 40 years, you know, by the grace of Allah. And uh, it was under the climate of the civil rights struggle, uh, the black conscious movement, uh, and me as a young man at that time wanting to identify, trying to find my identity like everybody else, and, you know, African American, you know, Young people wearing afros and throwing the black power sign. You know, uh, many people were joining the Nation of Islam, the Black Muslim Movement. Uh, there was the Five Percenters, and there were many different groups. And you know, so again, so Black Pride was 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 resonating. You know, in the in the in the in, in the country, uh, the, the civil rights struggle, Malcolm X, uh, uh, H. Rap Brown, Brown uh, Imam Jamil al Amin, current Imam Jamil al Amin, but then at that time H. Rap Brown, Martin Luther King, all of those. Uh, prominent figures was out in the forefront, you know, struggling and fighting for the rights of the people. So alhamdulillah, you know, as a young man, you know, becoming conscious of these things and so again researching for an identity and the only thing I knew 